Hey guys, Quip the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk about the new telescope from OPT slash Radian called the Raptor 61. And with a name like that it can only be a good telescope, right? So this new telescope, if you haven't heard about it, has been presented a few hours ago by Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard um, in his video and I'll be sure to put the link uh, above so you can uh, have a look if you're interested and it was basically presented as a telescope that uh, basically met the wish list of you know Trevor's needs for astrophotography and what came out of it and this was my first impression when I th when I saw just the thumbnail of the video I was like huh this scope looks a lot like a scope I own that just happens to be sitting right next to my head right now if I move my head too much I could Sorry, uh, he <laughs> hit it. Uh, but you know, I was like, okay, let's uh, let's have a look at the video. And I watched the video, and it turns out the specs are pretty much identical to this uh, scope. So we have the specs that are pretty much identical, and the shape of the scope is pretty much identical, which makes me think that it is probably a customized rebrand, not a straight rebrand. And where it has been rebranded is really what's going to make the whole difference. Now, um, this telescope here. You can use it with or without a focal reducer. With the focal reducer, it is a 275 millimeter focal length f4.5 telescope, just like the Radian telescope. And without, it is, well, it is f5.5. I don't remember the exact focal length in that case. Um, so, and it also comes with a visual back that uh, when you don't use it with a foc with a, the reducer, you can actually, you know, use eyepieces on it and use it as a visual telescope. Um, so it, it looks very, very, very similar, although I do not know what exactly they changed. So the differences that I can see is that at the very least, you do not have this handle uh, at, the, at the top of the telescope. You um, do not have the ability to have a visual back with the radiant uh, telescope and uh, you have a much better dovetail and actually even a choice of two dovetails for the radiant telescope and that is actually very welcome because the dovetail on this little telescope is probably its biggest weakness as far as I'm concerned because it looks like this it is absolutely super short it is towards the front of the scope so it makes it very difficult actually not not very difficult impossible to balance your camera properly with this dovetail so the fact that opt slash radian basically spent time uh making this telescope uh you know work better in terms of a dovetail it's already a point for them right the biggest difference still is the price apparently i'm told that in the us you can buy this telescope the sharp star 61 edph2 uh, for $650, uh, whereas the Radiant Telescope is, I think, $990, so almost $1,000. So that's a big, big price difference. And that's why I'm very interested in seeing what are differences between the two scopes. Because, um, sure, you, you have a better dovetail bar, but I just replaced the standard dovetail bar on my telescope with a Vixen one that was a bit longer and it cost me uh, what $20 something like that so it was you know not that much of a difference. Uh, does the telescope uh, from Radian have different glass? They're both triplets plus a, uh, um, another element in there that I believe has two lenses so when you take the whole package it's a quintuplet. Um, there is another rebrand of that sharp star from Telescope Optics or Telescope Service called the TS61 EDPH. It uses apparently better glass than this one, FPL53 glass, which has less uh, chromatic dispersion of light, which is a good thing. So, you know, maybe Radian has better glass as well and they didn't put it to the forefront of their advertising. Uh, it's possible that they have a better focuser, although honestly, the focuser on that Sharp Star Telescope is better smooth uh, to start with. It could be that there are other advantages that I am not aware of, but already just like, you know, the dovetail along with those rings and, and let's admit it, the, the rings, they're, they're basically do two dovetail rings instead of a all-in-one very short dovetail ring that we have here, uh, probably will provide more stability and they look very sleek to be honest there's like a locking mechanism that i don't haven't really seen on on my own rings which are super cheap rings usually and that's pretty neat i i cannot deny that but is all of this worth like 350 or 300 dollars difference it's all in the eye of the beholder 
if there is better glass, if there is better quality control and you're sure not to get a lemon and you know you can replace the telescope easily, you can get it repaired easily, whatever, and it's you know it just makes more sense to you personally, uh, then it might absolutely be worth uh, the price difference. So it might actually you know make sense overall just with the scope on its own. Now there is another difference though is that um, my telescope here does not come with any like focuser, uh, electronic focuser, sorry, so I bought the ZWEAF uh, focuser to attach to it. I was not a big fan of the ZWEAF as at first, uh, although like using it more on two different scopes right now, I find that it is a decent focuser. Not the best out there, definitely has a bit of backlash, even this sample in the end, but yeah, it's good, good enough at least. Um, OPT slash Radian, they actually offer their own focuser option. It is lighter than the ZWEF. It seems to be much slimmer, although longer than the ZWEF. Um, and by lighter, I mean, I think it's around 180 grams, whether this with the mounting plates is more like around 300 something grams. So it's, it's a fairly large um, difference. And, you know, it, it could make sense, except that the ZWEF is $200. The uh, electronic focuser option for the Radiant Telescope is $500. So the total price for this one with the ZW focuser, you're in the, if you're in the US, it's $850 if you buy everything at a cheap price. Whereas for the Radiant Telescope, we are at $1,500, which is almost twice, not quite, but almost twice. And that's where you start asking yourselves question. For me in Japan, where things are overpriced to start with, uh, the telescope and reducer sets uh, when bought cheaply is $850. And this focuser, electronic focuser is more like $300. So the price gap um, is much, much smaller, although you have to take into account shipping. Um, so, but is how is going to be the performance of the focuser on the Radiant Telescope? I don't know. It could be absolutely excellent zero backlash moonlight style focuser uh, with awesome software support, great absolute positioning, everything's awesome then it could absolutely be worth the price of uh, 500 US dollars. Um, it still has to run on a 12 volt kind of uh, voltage input. Um, so you can also use a, a USB to 12 volt adapter, but so can you with the EEF in my experience. I kind of wished that uh, they had made an option for when you had a very light camera to have um, a pure USB power to the, uh, to the focuser. That's what I had done with um, a Raspberry Pi based focuser that I had built a long while back. And it was very liberating not to have to use DC power for the, um, for the focuser. So in the end, like, what do I think about this new Radian slash OPT telescope? Like, is it just like, and it's focuser, it's just, is it just a rebrand? And I, we should all laugh at it because it is so freaking expensive. I don't think we should laugh at, at it. Even if it is a, a rebrand, I think they took the, uh, the Sharp Star, they looked at the worst parts of the Sharp Star, like the dovetail, they fixed that, uh, they look at whether at hard to put a decent focuser on top of it, they might have rebranded a focuser some, from someone else or made it themselves, I don't know. And they're offering an all-in-one package that is very sleek looking. Um, I love the colors and the marketing is beautiful. I mean, I, I irrationally want to buy this telescope, even though I already have the same thing, basically, that's already fully set up. It's a, honestly, it's a, it's a bit of a stroke of genius, but they have, as far as I know right now, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they are the only provider vendor that from the same, same brand has an all-in-one telescope that is fully automated with the electronic focuser. I think that's a pretty neat thing and it's a well done marketing. And I've learned something from the old Mead ETX uh, 125. If you're like me and you saw the ETX 125 in an old magazine, I think around I was around like 15 years old when I saw it in a in a French magazine, and I could not help but drool upon this telescope, knowing nothing about telescopes at the time because it was blue, it was sexy, it was shiny, and there was a quality to it that just made you buy it. And then more recently, we had the Red Cat and the Space Cat, and it was neat, it was cute, it was sleek. There was amazing marketing around it, and it was extremely popular. 
popular. Even though, in my opinion, I never considered it because of its helical fo focuser. And I hate helical focusers, even though like lenses are like that typically, but they're more difficult, difficult to automate than, uh, than standard focusers like, uh, like this one. Uh, but the Red Cat sold like amazingly well from what I, I, I could see. Like, I, I keep seeing posts all over the place of people who have the red cat and tons of people in the comments have the red cat and by all accounts it's, it's a great telescope. It's just that to me it looked a bit overpriced for what it was and the helical focuser was not my thing. But it is a very decent telescope with you know a fairly high price tag but you know excellent accessories, excellent marketing, probably excellent support, I don't know for sure. But it's, it's a winning recipe, right? And when I look at the Radiant telescope I see exactly the same thing. I see a very sleek telescope. I see sleek changes that have been made to the, um, to the original telescope. If it is a rebrand, again, I am not sure. And you know, there could be better QC, there could be better something else on top, like soft stats that we don't know about. Um, and there's like this all-in-one aspect, there's very sleek marketing around it. And you know, I have no doubt that it will be a huge success. And even if it is a rebrand, it's not a bad thing in and of itself, because we know for a fact that this telescope, the Sharp, Sharp Star 61ED PH2, is a great telescope. It has great optics, it works very well. So that means that if it's a rebrand, the Radiant Telescope will be the same. It's just you'll be paying more for the fact that it's a Radiant Telescope. Um, is that worth it? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. I mean, you know, it's like it's really all in the eye of the beholder. I don't know all of the advantages, but I sure understand and I feel the appeal of that telescope. Like really looking at the material, the logic of part, logical part of my brain tells me it's just a rebrand, why not buy this and then you'll be fine. But then like I look at the Radiant offering and it looks sleek. And there's something more about their focuser, by the way, like the biggest quality of their focuser is that it has a clutch. You can unbind the focuser. It looks to be very easy to install, very non-invasive, unlike this one. And um, you can unclutch it so that you can actually use the focuser manually even when it's installed. And I think that's a huge benefit. I don't like not being able to rake in and out the focus when I have this electronic focuser uh, attached, which I do have permanently. So in my opinion, that's a, that's a big win. So it's a great idea. And you know, why not? Again, is it worth the dollars? I don't know, but I think like to have an all-in-one kind of telescope, um, maybe. So really, I'll, I'm really waiting to see the actual performance of the telescope. In Trevor's video, we saw that in the full-frame camera, the stars in the corners were slightly elongated. Uh, which might actually be just the um, the backspace. I get the feeling that he might not have had exactly the right back backspace, even with a T-ring, which is supposed to give you exactly 55 millimeters. It might have been the case, but then he had a filter on top, and that filter might have you know um, messed a bit with the backspace, and that might expl explain his uh, elongated stars. And plus, you know my opinion about star shapes. If you've watched the channel, I don't really care. So it's like. You know, I want to see the actual performance of the telescope, actual user reviews from people not affiliated with Radian. Uh, but I'm not shocked and I'm not laughing at this telescope at all. Even if it is a rebrand, it's a rebrand of an excellent scope. And it seems they've put a lot of effort into, you know, making it into a sleek, nice looking and potentially better uh, scope than, uh, than the source scope that it's based on, if it is based on it. Now, to be clear, of course, I am an OPT affiliate and I have affiliate links down below. I'll actually put affiliate links to this Radiant Telescope while I'm at it, if you are adventurous enough to take it on pre-order. Um, but I have not been contacted by OPT about this Radiant Telescope. I know nothing about it besides the specs on their webpage and Trevor's video. And I have not been you know, asked to say anything about it. And 
It's my own personal opinion. I am not influenced by OPT at all on this. Um, so with that, you know, it was a quick like discussion, kind of a bonus video because it really caught my attention. And I think it caught the attention of a lot of people. And I wanted to give my quick impressions on it. Hopefully it's been useful. Um, I don't know if you are considering this scope or not, uh, but I'll be very much waiting to see what your opinions are on this. So feel free to put your opinion, opinions down in the comments if you have any suggestions, ideas, feedback, or what you think about this scope. Uh, please leave a like in the video. And if you are a new to this channel if you're not a subscriber welcome to the channel and if you like astrophotography astronomy you like tips and tricks gear reviews commentaries uh, ideas everything linked to that uh, st subject you can check my backlog my back catalog of videos see if it's uh, your thing and if you think it is your thing feel free to go down click that subscribe button that little notification bell and uh, i hope to see you in the next video and with that thank you so much for watching whenever you can don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.